continuing then. Whatever the person is, you know, whoever, whatever my actual being is in whatever dimensions, it's able to entertain thought or not, and different thoughts, and I am what I think. Uh, Descartes thought, you know, I think, therefore I am. I'm saying I am what I think. So a person who changes what they think dramatically, you know, they now, I don't know, believe God exists and didn't before, they're dramatically different. And some people go the other way. That's quite frightening to experience, too, to see that in someone. And we rescue someone by their thoughts being changed. Uh, the complete rescue is to know God. Extra extraordinary, harmonious, set of thoughts that constitute God and since we're not aware of holding a variety of thoughts at the same time I think we're saying that we're identified by what access we have of God's mind and we could be identified by uh, a particular selection of thoughts that are uh, not consistent chaotic you know God is able to hold all thoughts the thoughts of things being good and the thoughts of things being bad um, the possibility of things being green or yellow or red you know, the imagination can um, lend itself to all possibilities according to what it selects into the mix of consciousness. And a person who is unenlightened has a, a pretty incongruous mix, contradictory sort of chaos um, that's not matched by the thoughts and consciousness that God exercises of the vast, infinite, dare I say, different thoughts that he can draw upon from his mind. And we, as we become more godly, more holy, move nearer to a harmony of thoughts and their harmony with God. Um, and what, that's what we would call higher levels of consciousness. And by consciousness, levels of consciousness, we mean exercised and accessed, accessed thoughts that are more harmonious with each other and with God. Sonship is then access to God's understanding, the consciousness of God. Sonship of God is uh, having the access to the Father's mind. I hesitate to say his mind is, is what he is. I think our personhood has or exercises thought and the thoughts that we hold 
the persona of that person of that being so my actual personhood and selection of consciousness accessed of God's mind are the same thing we are persons in God's mind clusters of his mind's thoughts that do or do not match up well uh, in harmony or not in harmony with the thoughts that he exercises which are holy, good, harmonious, uh, true, consistent, etc. We know the list. So what we take as God's character is his exercised persona, and I don't mean mask now, I mean that is his exercised person, his exercised selection of thoughts that we associate with the goodness of God. And we, we know the list, don't we? You know, integrity and, and kindness and, uh, and creativity and so forth. That is what he exercises always, faithfully and constantly, his great integrity. Um, we move towards that or away, by which I mean we become more consistent with that or less consistent. Perhaps I mean more harmonious or less harmonious, because I'm definitely leaving open the uniqueness of each person. So, yes, our persona in the world is this mask that uh, presents in the material world. But our actual person, it's a bit like our false ego and our true ego. Our actual person is the access we have to God's mind. And uh, that access is more and more or rather, our, yeah, what we're exercising is more and more of that which God is exercising. The more and more enlightened or holy we truly are. So this is life eternal, to know thee, to know God, which is to know his persona, what he's exercising of all thoughts. And the saving anointing, the thoughts that save and rescue us, which is another selection of thoughts, or a very specific selection, subsection of his thoughts, and therefore a person uh, presenting in this world as Jesus, yes, uh, but it could um, well, Jesus has the Son within him. He's presenting a certain persona in the world, which we call Jesus, the man, if you like. But the Holy Spirit can come directly into the person. Uh, you know, I'll send you another comforter. Um, not clear whether he's speaking for God or for the Holy Spirit. Oh, let me say in passing that the more you hone in on, like, um, is it hone or hone in on, um, uh, like worship or um, intensive meditation, thought analysis, preoccupation, um, 
singing, chanting, whatever it is, whatever makes you focus narrowly on something that specifically is associated with God, godliness, spirituality, holiness, the more you respond, your body responds, and uh, what's happening around you starts to respond, what's happening to you accordingly. Um, because you are more influential in your impact on God's mind and consciousness and being. A sense he becomes more conscious of you uh, because he's interacting with you if you like you're speaking his language and uh, what you're asking is more and more consistent quite narrow perhaps you're just worshipping but um, more and more truly so there's a sort of purity in what you're doing and that is effective Hence, when we pray, we're meant to be visualizing. Uh, our mind is preoccupied with the healing, not the disease, say. We're preoccupied with what we're visualizing that we're asking for, not the state of how things are at present. Whereas the unbeliever looks at what things are at present and just says, well, that's not going to change easily, is it? <laughs> so we have this fantastic ability to think different things. And we can choose to think certain thoughts that change the reality of the phenomenal physical world that we're in because it is in itself purely thought. The thoughts that God's holding and that will respond to your call on it, your impact, your thoughts because you're a child of God. You have the same um, type of ability it's just that you're a child, you're not very competent at using it. But we learn. We enter into some degree of sovereignty in how this creation is being thought, how this universe is manifesting. Little ways, like finding the things we've lost healing the pain that you're presented with, and so forth. Minor compared to the impressiveness of the universe and creation, of course. But potentially, Utterly tremendous. You know, the earth trembles at his name. And rightly so, so to speak. And when we imagine nothing can stand before him, what I think we mean is that he has this overwhelming power to alter everything according to his will. And we as children of God are being trained to 
be like that. Because we're of him. And because he wants a family of wonderful beings like himself. And has it. Infinite from our point of view. And ever expanding. God is an awesome God. <laughs> Way beyond our imagination. At present. But by and by. We'll get there. Thank you Heavenly Father. <laughs>